Hello and welcome to the stream. I am your host, Jinx. This is Live Free or Die Bard, Episode 9. We are doing the heart of rock and roleplay, focusing on roleplaying encounters and adventures. Uh, welcome and welcome back to those of you who are joining us uh, live on Twitch and uh, for those of you who are watching later on on our YouTube channel. Hi. Uh, our videos will appear there about a week afterward we record them on Twitch. Uh, for those of you in the, in the chat, feel free to participate at any point during the course of the stream and add your own suggestions and comments, and we will try to incorporate them into our game. What is Live For Your Die Bar? This is our role-playing game, our fifth edition Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game that we're making from scratch. Uh, we're doing it on Obsidian Portal. Uh, the web address is right there in front of you livefree or diebards.obsidianportal.com if you want to follow along. We're using OP to uh, organize all of our campaign notes and then later on when we go to run the game we're going to run it uh, off of OP as our, instead of a paper notebook or something like that, we're going to use the website to run the game. So we need to put everything up on there uh, in the public space so you can see it, so spoiler warning if you do plan to play this game later on. Uh, thanks. The, uh, the, the, I, I included some, uh, some wires into the hat so that I could, uh, adjust the jaunty level of the hat. Uh, <laughs> it's customizable. Um, but yeah, spoiler warning, uh, anybody who wants to play this game, you are going to see some stuff, uh, that will spoil some of the surprises, but, uh, we'll be working on it for a while before we run it, so we got a while. For that, you'll probably forget about it, don't worry about it. Uh, so Obsidian Portal um, is our note-taking device. Uh, you can look around using that address uh, right there and see what we've done so far uh, and follow along as we go. And uh, let me pull that off of there. Uh, so what are we up to um, so far? Uh, what we've done is uh, we've come up with uh, the basic plot line of our game. Uh, we're in a world of musical adventure. Um, the party will be forming a, uh, a band or a group of entertainers um, and uh, going around from place to place, uh, getting gigs and doing adventures. We'll talk about that some later uh, in the stream, the second half of the stream, figuring out some custom rules for that. Uh, we have uh, started our adventure. Let's take a look at it now. Uh, this is a wiki style interface for those of you who haven't been with this before. So we've got in our uh, wiki, uh, this is where we're putting lots of uh, cool stuff that we're doing. Um, in our adventure log, normally you would uh, record your adventure sessions and uh, take, a, take a look at those kind of things after the fact. We're using it to record our actual adventures. And uh, we're, we're setting it up so that you'll be able to run the adventure as the GM or DM, depending on your preference. It's Game Master or Dungeon Master, if you don't know what those stand for. Uh, you can run it straight from here. So, we've got our adventures, adventures into Paradise City, um, and we've gotten them uh, down to where we need them to be. Let's show you on the easy-to-read version. Uh... We've got them into Paradise City. Uh, we've got them uh, hooked on. Uh, they've seen some of our main plot line uh, at a distance uh, where criminals are being branded by the clergy and they lose their magical powers. Uh, we have gotten them uh, a place to stay in an inn uh, called the Heartbreak. And we got them inside. There's a small dungeon in there that we worked on uh, for the past couple of weeks. And we've got them uh, down through that dungeon. We uh, pretty much finished it. There were a couple of little details uh, left that we'll, we'll do some cleanup work here in a second. Um, but this time we are focusing on our section three of our adventure one, which is the white wedding. Uh, this is going to be our role play, heavy social interaction uh, section. Uh, the reason we're putting that in is because we're trying to cater to uh, all of our character archetypes. These are what uh, players want in general when they show up to a game. These are the kind of people that you're going to meet in your neighborhood when you start uh, running games. 
Um, we have some stuff for Ezra the Explorer. We gave her a dungeon uh, to check out. Uh, Polly the Power Gamer has had a couple of low-level uh, combat encounters so far and a few skill challenges, but nothing major. Uh, Eddie the Escapist uh, likes the, the, the aspect of role-playing games where you're, you're playing pretend and you're, you're not in your boring 9-to-5 job. Uh, we've helped Norbert the Noob significantly by giving him lots of uh, easy intro kind of stuff, teaching him the game as we play. And uh, Wanda the World Builder has not had a chance to uh, really have anything cool yet. We're, we're going to get to her eventually, but this time we're focused on this particular archetype, Alice the Actor. Uh, so this session, uh, when we're creating our uh, role-playing section of the game, we're going to be thinking about uh, what she wants out of the game, giving her lots of opportunities to role-play. Okay, so for the chat, uh, eventually we are going to need some... Uh, some NPCs, uh, so start thinking about um, some of your favorite uh, rock stars or uh, personalities in the music business that you think should uh, should participate. If you can come up with some funny names for them uh, or things that they do, we're eventually going to have a love triangle, a bride that doesn't want to get married and is being forced to by her evil family, and um, one of our bad guys is going to be uh, a member of the clergy or at least tied to the clergy, perhaps. And, uh, he's going to be the, the the wicked husband to be. Um, so start thinking about some some cool names you might want to throw in for later. But let's get started uh, where we left off last time in the adventure section. Uh, we're going to talk about some styling. Um, if you're not already watching our uh, Tuesday night show. Uh, it's Tuesdays at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. That's GMT minus four. Uh, it's Kalak Hacks, and he's uh, doing he's customizing uh, Obsidian Portal pages with CSS and teaching you how to do all the kind of cool custom stuff and really get the most visually out of your site. Uh, that's a good one to watch for if you want to make all this stuff look really cool. Um, so we're going to use some of his tips, uh, we're going to try to every week anyway, and use some of his tips and, and make our stuff look a little bit better. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is go down to, I'll show you what we're talking about. This right in here is a table. Um, uh, Obsidian Portal uses Textile, if you don't know, um, Textile is a it's a little sort of a shortcut language. Um, you can just Google a textile reference and, and get to this. There's also a, a link uh, inside um, OP for when you start to edit things. You can check that out. But we're uh, using a textile table here, and I'll show you what this ends up looking like. Uh, so we got our little shadow boxes that we read, and then when we get down to the table, this is our stat block here. Uh, the section here for um, quick and dirty monster stats. So when you're running the adventure, uh, you'll go down, you'll see all of your uh, stats in a convenient little box. We may style this up a little bit more so it's even easier to read later on. Uh, but this is the general idea of what you want in a, in a stat block. Uh, and then if you need more details, you can look it up in your monsters manual or other source book wherever you're pulling uh, your, your critters from. This is a custom designed critter called a rat, an extra T. Um, and they are just slightly beefier than a regular rat. So we've got them. So um, let me show you how that is accomplished. Uh, if you see here, um, this is in your textile reference if you, if you need uh, to look later. I've made rats bold by putting um, asterisks on either side with no spaces. Uh, all their special powers are listed right below that, so they're easy to go. And then this is how you do a table. Uh, it's table, curly brackets, border, colon, 1px, that's your one pixel wide uh, space, solid space, black, curly, uh, period. Uh, this is how you start a table. Uh, the one pix solid black will give you the black border. You can change that, of course, to thicker lines or different colors. Uh, and then you do the straight line uh, bracket, or I'm sorry, the straight line up and down. Uh, it's the 
on most keyboards it's above your enter key, uh, a slash, and then you shift, and that'll be your straight line. Uh, you put one of these little straight line, I'm sure it has a technical name, uh, things in between all of your cells in your table that you want, and then uh, Textile and OP will divide them appropriately for you up to a certain point uh, so that they look all right. You can uh, customize these also and make uh, different background colors and stuff. We're not going to get into that today because it's, it's a little more styling than I uh, want to play with right now. We're just trying to make things easy to read. So we want to use this particular format. I'm just going to copy it. I believe down below here somewhere else we have the rats appear again. We do. And we want to put that in here like that. And we'll have it in two places if we need it. Um, let's go down and save. If you make changes, you go down to the bottom of the page, you hit save and we'll come back. And then we have, you can scroll down very easily and then you see right away where your uh, little table is, your rows and columns. You can come down again for when they fight them the second time, you find them again. So that's basically that. I also want to include uh, these stats. Horizontal rule, thank you. Uh, I have several friends in the chat who have actual IT uh, training and experience. Unlike me, I'm, I'm just winging it. But you can uh, very easily do stuff in this particular format. Um, you do not have to be a pro to do any of this stuff. Okay, uh, bestiary. On my main wiki, I have a bestiary. Uh, we want to make sure and get the rats into our bestiary. So I'm going to go up to the little edit icon. It's the pen and paper. Uh, I'm trying to make this um, alphabetical in our listing. I'm going to do rats. Uh, so to make an, an entry for any of your wiki things, you do a double square bracket on either side. Come down and save. And that creates your uh, link. Then you click on the link. You'll come up here. Uh, so this is an, another wiki page. It's separate. And then we're going to... Um, uh, this is the name of the page, and then the tags, we will make them a monster and hit tab to add that as a tag, so it's easy for searching later on. And then we want to add our little uh, stat block. There's also a, a GM-only section down here if you want GM-only notes. We're not using that because we need everybody to be able to see everything on this one. Uh, auto outlining uh, basically gives you a little table of contents on the side. Uh, you can make the entire page GM only so that your uh, non GM players can't access it. You can add a player secret to send a secret uh, message to one or more of your players. You can notify people by email. And then uh, there's lots of options on the side for adding cool stuff. Uh, right now, we just want uh, our stat block. I'll paste from where I copied before, and then we're going to um, include a little descriptive element here. Um, Well-fed rodents from the abandoned underground. Uh, tunnels beneath. Uh, I want it to be Paradise City. Uh, I want to include a wiki link so they can get to that if they need to. Uh, we, we kind of have a big list now, so it, because it behooves us to start searching. So you can search by name, you can search by tag. Uh, I forget what my tags are. You know, cities, stuff like that. So we're, we're going to do Paradise City. We want to insert it. And then this is your textile uh, markup so you have the thing at the beginning is the, uh, the the page itself and then the thing after our horizontal rule thanks Jim uh, is where is a pipe oh yeah pipe thanks uh, the thing after this uh, is uh, what text you want to appear on the page for people to read 
Okay, well-fed rodents from the abandoned underground tunnels beneath Paradise City. Um, these uh, let's see um, bold creatures often lash out when defending they are bountiful food supply. Okay. That's about all we need for now. Let's go down and create our page. Let's see if I have formatted correctly. And yep, that's pretty good. Okay. So now whenever you need to, uh, you can, we have a page we can link to. So back in our adventure log, if we want to, um, we can go in and put a link whenever they reach the rats. So here's our rats. Uh, I want to make this where we put our wiki link. So go over to the side and we'll search by monster. That's the, how you tag your orts. And we got rats. I think we can make this bold. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know if you put it. Let's experiment. Let's see what happens. Yep, there it is. So now it's, it's bold in the link. So they can go to the beast area when they want to. Alright, be sure to uh, save when you've made a change. And there you go. Uh, finish your final draft of hopefully homebrew spell. Uh, I don't mind links. That's cool. If you want to, we'll check it out. Yeah, I'm all about homebrew creations. It's especially good if you're uh, playing with a group that's been playing role-playing games for a while and they have memorized most everything. Uh, my current gaming group, we played lots of D&D over time and uh, even switching editions. We, you know, we played it for years and years and years. And the only way to really surprise them with stuff is to switch things around and homebrew. Thanks, Stevie Beyond. I'll have to check it out after the stream. Thanks for sharing. Uh, okay, so we got our rats. Uh, we can get to them now. We have their stat block here. We can also, if we need to, we can pull up a new tab and they will uh, pop up if you need to read the description or something like that. That's really handy navigation. Um, also, for uh, since we're working on making things look nice, I also wanted to talk about... Um, breaking up your images uh or breaking up your text blocks uh, we call it wall of text um this for example is a big page with a bunch of text and links i put a little graphic in here uh, i don't particularly like how this one looks so i'm going to change it i'm going to remove this one and put a new one in uh, but basically what i want is an image that uh sort of stretches across and uh, does essentially a line break uh, without an actual line, I want it to be a picture. So let's get rid of that. Save, and then we're going to go and search for some uh, some images that we can use. I like the idea of the the music notes going across if it's a music game. Um, so let's go. I'll show you how I get images and how I edit. Uh, so let's go over here. Okay, so there's two sites I primarily use for free images. Uh, Pixabay and Unsplash. Uh, it's Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot com. And Unsplash is U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H dot com. Uh, these both have lots of free images. You can use them with or without attribution. It's where you have to give credit to somebody because a lot of places, if you're using these for official commercial purposes or something uh, you, you do want to give appropriate attribution uh, these two particular sites you can also use for commercial things so if you want to uh, like write your own 
uh, games and adventures. The stuff on here are free stock images, royalty free, stuff like that. Okay. Um, you can also check out uh, anything with Creative Commons. Uh, that's a who's, is that Wikipedia that started that? I don't remember who started it, but it's um, you can search for Creative Commons stuff. All those images are free. They do request that you put um, an attribution for the Creative Commons in there so people can find them easily. So if that works for whatever it is that you're making, that's another good option for free stuff. Uh, so I'm going to try Pixabay, and we're going to search for um, let's search for sheet music, and then we're looking for something that I can uh, pull a sort of a long uh, image out of. This one's kind of good. Let's check this guy out. Yeah, that's not bad. Sort of a faded. Uh, look there. That's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to do that one. So you can download it. Uh, there's a capture if you're not a menu uh, member. And uh, I have to do the image capture. I love these. The older you get, the more these are. So all of the cards in them. Check the new images too. Back in my day, our captures were all typing. Mm -hmm. Did I miss any? Let's go card. These are really bad images. We're training AI, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, part of capture and recapture projects are that they uh, help to train AI to um, read books and stuff like that. That's probably all of them, right? Traffic lights. I've done this one before. This is the price of uh, free images. You don't always have to do this in here, by the way. Okay, download. Uh, you guys won't be able to see my um, file folders, but I am just getting the in the uh, copy of the image to where I need to go. Uh, you can also this is where you get your uh, image author. You can say thanks to them. You can donate to them. Things like that. It's a good cause to support if you're a rich person. I am not. Uh, okay, let me paste my image and then I will open it up so you guys can see it. And let me switch to this so that you can see. Paint. Okay, this is paint.net. Uh, it's a free, all my programs are free. Uh, it's a free uh, image manipulation uh, tool. So I need a nice uh, narrow uh, height. I need a, a, a low height, but a, a wide uh, image to serve as my page break. Um, so I'm going to play around with that. I'm looking for um, something along the lines. Uh, let's see, I wrote it down somewhere. About 500 to 600 pixels wide and about 50 pixels tall, give or take. So uh, I'm using my uh, rectangle select tool over here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna eyeball it, and try and pull out something that's pretty close. Uh, go up to the top, do image, and go to resize. Oh wait, that's the full image. I went to image, crop to selection. Let's see how close we get. So we'll just pull out the part that I selected. Uh, now we want to resize. Let's see what size we have. Okay, so um, this is this is bigger than I want. Uh, so up here, this little checkbox that says maintain aspect ratio. Uh, that'll maintain the ratio between the width and the height, so it will always stay in this basic rectangle. It will just get smaller or bigger. For example, if I lower this height, then the uh, width will also lower. Uh, you can also do it in inches down there if you're worried about that. So I want to try and get it to about 50. All right, so it's not quite uh, as long as I would like. I would like it to be a little closer to 500. So I'm going to turn off my maintain aspect ratio and, sure, and pump this up to 500. Let's hit OK. Let's see what we've got. 
We'll zoom in. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, this is not the, the clearest image in the world. It doesn't have to be. This is sort of background filler kind of stuff. It's just a visual break in a big chunk of text, and I want to have this available. Uh, so that's pretty good for me. I, I think that's appropriate. Uh, we can we find something better later on, or we can jazz it up and put a little icon in the middle. That might be cool once we have a cool icon. I found that uh, often when you're writing the game later on, you will come up with some cool visual. Uh, it might happen much later in the game, maybe towards the end, and then that ends up being, uh, you know, uh, iconic enough that you can use it as a as a symbol for the game. You can stick it in your title banner, do whatever. Okay, so we've done that. Um, let me pull. Yes, that's a way now. Close that. that. Okay, let's go back to our OP page. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about the media library. Uh, your media library, uh, you can put files here and use them on your page or just use them for storage. Um, you will have a uh, different... Um, uh, amounts that you can store depending on what your account is. Mine is an ascendant account, so I get 10 gigs uh, available to put in there. And um, let's uh, sheet. Right, and I am dragging and dropping. I can't see that on your screen, I assume. Uh, dragging and dropping my files, and then it appears down here. And now we can use our sheet music break uh, wherever we like. Uh, so I'm going to use it on this main page. I want to um, split the, uh, the special rules and the um, information uh, the, uh, about the world in the different sections. So I'm going to go to edit and the main page. Uh, so I've got character creation rules and house rules. I want to put my uh, my line break here, my visual line break. Uh, so we're going to go to image embed um, and do this guy. Click on it. Uh, I want to make sure it's centered. And then you hit insert. And if I have gauged correctly, uh, this is what it'll look like. So there's that. Um, if you're looking on different size screens and stuff like that, this will always sort of uh, center up, uh, depending on how your screen folds out. Uh, so you can do that if you want a little visual break. Yeah, I think later on when we, when we come up with a cool uh, icon for the game itself as we go, we don't have one yet, we might stick it in the middle of that and make it, make it pop a little bit more. Uh, is the program window not showing some of the stuff? Uh, possibly. Which, which stuff are you missing? Because uh, my uh, I'm using OBS Studio, so my stuff won't show you, uh, for example, any file folders that I open. It won't show you that. I could set it up that way, but uh, I figured that would not be as important to you guys. Um, oh, it wasn't showing the maintain aspect ratio and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I don't. I missed that. I don't know. So. Uh, let me open it back up and see if that's see if that's a thing. Hang on a second. <laughs> okay. See if I can get this to pop up. Oops. Settings. No, it's not cooperating. Sorry. 
I'll play with it after stream. We'll see if we can figure it out. Uh, anyway, though, all the stuff that I said still applies. There will be some sort of whatever uh, program you're using will be some sort of maintain aspect ratio when you're cropping and moving things around. You should be good to go. Okay. Um, where was I? So we've got a way to do uh, visual line breaks now. We can change those later on as we need them, but probably as uh, our wiki fills up with more and more stuff, you will notice that you will have walls of text and you need some way to do that. Uh, so that's what I recommend, is putting some kind of visual break in there uh, with your media library if you uh, want to do it that way. Um, what other things do we need to clear up a little of the useful information for you to have? Um, so watching uh, Calac codes, I was learning about a little bit about uh, some breadcrumbing and uh, navigation and uh, how it's really handy to have that kind of stuff. So, um, for example, um, on our wiki, uh, if we want to get all the way to our town of Paradise City, where the swords are keen and the dice are pretty, uh, we have to go to our Kingdom of Calliope. We click on that. We go to cities, towns, and villages. We click on that. We go to Paradise City. We click on that. And then from there, we can go to, let's say, the Heartbreak Inn. So we're like four levels in uh, to this. Now, if I want to get back to something that I, I missed, I could hit my back button, but it would be handy to have something up here at the top that was a, a nice little navigation tool. So I think we're going to add uh, that kind of stuff here to the Heartbreak Inn. Uh, so basically, you're just going to do that with some wiki links. Um, put it right up here at the top so it's easy. You can put it at the bottom, whatever is convenient for you. You can custom style it. There's lots of ways to go. Uh, so we want, um, let's see, it is a city, town, and village, uh, but I believe it was the Kingdom of Calliope was the first one. So we do Kingdom of Calliope. And then I'm going to put a dash, and we'll see if that uh, works. We can always change that. Uh, Kingdom of Calliope, I think it was cities, towns, and villages was next. And then a dash. Oh, uh, allows you to undock toolbars. Yeah, it probably was. That's probably what it was. Yeah. Thanks. Paterius. Um, Let's see, towns and villages. Um, what am I missing here? Let me open this in another tab. Uh, Kingdom of Calliope, cities, towns, and villages. Paradise City was next, and then you got the last one. Okay, so that's what that was. So, next WikiLink is. Paradise City, and then here, at the Heartbreak. Okay, um, so let's preview and make sure those dashes look like what we want them to look like. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so this way, like when you're down here and you remember, oh, I want to go back to other cities, towns, and villages, you don't have to hit your back button if you don't want to. You can just go up and have links to that. You can put those all over the place, whatever's convenient for you as uh, the GM running the game or what you think will be convenient for the players when they're navigating around looking for stuff. Um, you can customize it to your heart's content. Uh, we could even do like a little stack if we wanted to instead of a line. But this is good for now. I just wanted to show you how it works. Okay, um, so that's breadcrumbing in a nutshell. Uh, I'll eventually go back in and uh, do that for other places that need it, other other links and, and things. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the heart of the matter, uh, what the episode's all about, uh, which is uh, role-playing and setting up role-playing encounters, how to, how to do it, uh, how to do your NPCs uh, so that they are engaging, all that kind of stuff. So uh, the first thing 
that we should uh, mention is what's in your fifth ed source books. Um, we'll start with this is the Dungeon Master's Guide, if that will autofocus correctly. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have this to run a game, uh, certainly not as a player. As a DM, it is very helpful uh, in terms of setting up your world and uh, that kind of stuff and setting up all those kind of things. But if you want to um, check out things about um, social situations and, and uh, social interaction, uh, in the DMG on page 244, they have a whole section on social interaction and their basic rules for this. this is, uh, it's been streamlined significantly from previous editions and they made it quite easy uh, to go through. So, uh, during a social interaction, the adventurers usually have a goal uh, to extract information, secure aid, win someone's trust, escape punishment, avoid combat, negotiate a treaty, or achieve whatever other objective led to the interaction in the first place. Uh, the creatures they interact with will also have an agenda. So, uh, you as the, as the DM will be um, sort of managing those two things, getting them together, and um, educating what they decide to do, and then setting difficulties and things and stuff like that. So, uh, some DMs prefer to run social inter interactions as a free form of role-playing exercise. That's my preference, uh, where dice rarely come into play. Other DMs prefer to resolve the outcome of an interaction by having characters make charisma checks. Either approach works. Um, totally agree. Uh, you probably don't want something like, uh, well, it depends on what it is, like, if it's not important to the story, you can just go with a straight charisma check. Like if, um, let's say, Polly the Power Gamer says, uh, I'm going to go in and intimidate the shopkeeper and get a discount on some item. And you don't want to deal with it. It's, it's not important to the story right now to you. You can say, okay, go ahead and just make a charisma check. We'll see how well you do. And make a charisma check. You say you get 20% off of that item, whatever you want to do. That's, that's a good way to do that. If you don't have time for it, you don't want to focus on it. Uh, if we do want to focus on it for this particular game, because the role-playing section is going to be important uh, for the rest of our plot inside of Paradise City, which is going to take us from level 1 to about level 5. So we want them to have um, lots of social interaction opportunities to meet folks. Um, how they have, have the rules of the book, uh, how they have the resolving interactions. Um, there's stuff in the PHB too, which I'll get to in a second. Um, uh, the starting attitude is um, generally whenever uh, the adventuring group meets a person or a creature, they will be either friendly, indifferent, or hostile. There's some different versions of that. And then uh, if you are trying to manipulate them and make them uh, more friendly or less friendly, uh, you can use checks, you can use. Um, just sort of common sense, like uh, role playing. Like if I go up and I'm super nice to somebody, then they will generally over time get more friendly. As long as I'm not going against whatever their agenda is or bothering them. Um, conversations. You want to play out your conversations. Uh, let the adventurers make their points, trying to frame their statements in terms that are meaningful to the creature they're interacting with, and then you can try and change the attitude. The rules they have for changing attitude are also here on page 244. Uh, might change over the course of the conversation if they say and do the right things. Uh, if they touch on a particular creature's ideal, ideal bond or flaw, which are elements of their character, if you want to make those. So we're going to keep those in mind when we're making our NPCs today uh, for when they get manipulated. Uh, likewise, a gaff, insult, or harmful deed might make a friendly creature temporarily indifferent or turn an indifferent creature hostile. Uh... <clears throat> so it's up to you as the GM how you want it to work. Uh, if it's important to your story, then you may want to make it uh, easier or harder. You may want to give them opportunities to learn about the, the character, the NPC, before they interact with them so they have some tools with which to work. Uh, determining characteristics is in here too. Uh, they don't necessarily enter into social interaction with full understanding of the creature's ideal bond or flaw. They want to shift the attitude by playing on these characteristics. They have to determine what the creature cares about. Uh, so they want to interact with them, preferably before they make whatever the check that is that you want them to make. They can do that with a wisdom insight check uh, to un like have a conversation. You talk for a while, make it a wisdom insight check. You figure out they have 
a flaw of um, shyness, and maybe you're trying to get them out of their shyness. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, if you fail by a bunch, like 10 points or more on your on your uh, wisdom check, you might get that wrong, and then that might screw up later things. Um, and then my personal preference is to learn about a uh, creature or uh, NPC from other sources, talking around town, gathering rumors, and that kind of stuff, uh, searching for their stuff if you have a, a rogue type. Um, that might be a whole adventure right there. Um, charisma checks. Uh, if you've never run D&D before, 5th uh, Ed, you're making ability checks. Uh, to determine how you uh, how well you do at skills, so charisma check is anything to do with like your personality, uh, something like that. So when you get to the point of your request, demand, suggestion, whatever it is that you're trying to do, you can call for a charisma check as the GM. Um, any character who actively participated in the conversation can make the check. So a bunch of people can help. You. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then you might also um, be able to use proficiencies or even tools. Uh, you might have gotten advantage or disadvantage during the course of the thing. You might have inspiration to deal with, uh, things like that. So there's lots of things that can modify the check. But you're looking at somewhere between 0 and 30 um, as your difficulty class, your DC. Um, 0 would be like you've done a great job convincing them. They're already convinced. You don't really need to make the check. And, and you're good to go. A 30 would be next to impossible, especially at low levels like we are. I think it would be impossible in level one. I can't think of a way to, to get quite that high. Um, aiding the check. This is one of the rules for skill checks. Other characters who make substantial contributions to the conversation can help the character making the check. The helping character says or does something that would influence the interaction in a positive way. The character making the charisma check can do so with advantage. That's where you roll uh, your d20. You roll it twice, you take the better of the two. Uh, disadvantage is the opposite of that. So you roll twice, take the worst of the two. Multiple checks. Certain situations may call for more than one check, particularly if the adventurers come into the interaction with multiple goals. And then you may or may not need to repeat the process as you go. Uh, we're gonna. It also has tips about how to roleplay in here. We'll get into that later when we're making our NPCs. So that's a good one to do. Page two forty four is where that stuff starts in D and G. There's another section of a book. Uh, let's. Sort of important to what we're going to be talking about next. That's the player's handbook. This one is kind of critical if you're running a 5th edition D&D game. Having the physical book or a PDF, pretty, pretty crucial. Um, so we're going to be using this one uh, later when we're making some custom rules in the stream. But basically, uh, it's if you uh, need to know more about ability checks, skills, proficiencies, and stuff like that, it starts with page 174 of your, of your PHP. Um, talks about passive checks. Uh, working together and group checks is a, a thing that we'll come back to later on, but uh, you may be doing that in this particular section. So that's another good one to read up on. Uh, basically, it's how to, how to do teaming up, similar stuff to what we just talked about. Uh, you can do group checks where some or several of the people are making particular checks to get something accomplished, and uh, if at least half the group succeeds, the whole group succeeds, otherwise the group fails. Um, they're not going to come up very often, but they are going to come up in our game because we're going to use them, I believe, for our uh, entertainment uh, performance stuff for our ensemble if they make a band or uh, some other kind of entertainment troupe. That's what that's going to be for. Okay, so that's the stuff you need for your, from your source books. So let's start plotting out our uh, our role-playing section of the game. If you'll remember in our overview of Adventure 1, we split it up into four parts. We want each part to take roughly an hour, which gives you about four hours of game time. We have the intro section uh, where we get them into the city. We describe things. We let them look around a little bit. And we hook them as quickly as we can into... Um, doing our uh, little mini dungeon adventure, uh, which is part two. We built this city. Uh, that's what we did uh, past couple of streams, is do the little dungeon underneath. We're going to revisit that dungeon later on, but we gave them access to a chunk of it so they can move around. They have um, our unpainted prop here. Uh, they have retrieved this from the dungeon, hopefully, and 
they've done it right. They've had a couple combats, and they're going to put that particular thing together later on. They don't know what any of it is yet, uh, but they have a couple of clues to get started. When they come out of the dungeon, uh, they will be moving on to this section, White Wedding, which is what we're working on today. Uh, so when they come out of the dungeon, how do you get them out of the dungeon if they're not ready to come out? Uh, we discussed it before, the dungeon often floods with rainwater, so just have it start raining, have the water start rising, they gotta leave, they don't have any spells at level 1 that lets them breathe underwater yet, so they gotta go. Uh, same's true if they start breaking down walls and going places you don't want them to go, have the dungeon start to flood, uh, have the lady upstairs scream for help, something, you know, get, get them out, get them moving on. Um, so once they come out, maybe they're going to go buy some acid to dissolve the metal bars that are blocking their way. Maybe they're going to get tools, whatever. That's when we nail them with the next hook for Ballroom Blitz. So let's go, or for White Wedding, sorry, White Wedding. Let's go down to the bottom of where we were. Uh, okay, so we're out of the dungeon. Uh, what's our, how we're we doing section titles. Okay, so this is uh, how we did our section headings. Um, it's a heading two, so that's the size of a, the font. Uh, the plus around it and the asterisk around it. Well, I think the plus is the underline and the asterisk is the bold. So we've copied this. We're taking it down to the bottom. We paste it and we're in part three, which was White wedding. Is it a nice day for a white wedding? No, just white wedding. Okay. White wedding. So this is our section three. So the basic layout of uh, any story. It is a nice day for it. I agree. Take your head back home. Um, okay, so the basic layout for any uh, story. or a story within a story right now. Uh, is you need some kind of an intro, you need a hook, you have some kind of rising action, you have some sort of a climax, and you have a resolution. This is basic storytelling. You probably learned about this in elementary school, uh, but we're revisiting it now. Uh, so uh, we've already got our intro, we've already got them there. Uh, the hook is the critical part, this is the part that's going to lock them into um, what they what they have to do next, because we are railroading a little bit. This is Adventure 1, we have to push them where we need them to go. So we're doing a little bit of railroading and then giving them the freedom to act within our rails that we have set up. So our hook is going to be a person, I think, and I think that person is going to be our uh, bride, our unwilling bride. The uh, young rock girl who does not want to get married and is being forced to. So, we'll need an NPC for that. So, if anybody has any cool names in the chat for uh, your favorite female uh, singer, musician, instrument player, rock star, personality, whatever, uh, we can use those. Feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, that's going to be our um, our lady who needs some help. Our, our damsel in distress. Uh, classic adventure fair. Uh, so the hook is going to be that she shows up. Uh, she finds them wherever it is that they happen to be. So we can't railroad them completely. We don't know where they're going to they're gonna end up exactly. But the hook is the damsel in distress runs into the party and begs for help. Uh, so the uh, title of our adventure is Two Tickets to Paradise is where the two tickets will come in. 
so there's going to be a masquerade ball where our, our part four, our climax of our story is going to, is going to uh, happen. This is also where this particular girl is getting married. Uh, or hope if you want to, as players, stop it. That's where you're stopping her from getting married. Uh, and she's going to have two tickets to get into this uh, event that she's going to hand off at this point. So she gives them two tickets to a masquerade ball. Uh, so what happens if there are more than two adventurers? Some take on Stevie Nicks would be good. She's always sad and probably needs saving. You are not lying. <laughs> I love how in some of some of their songs they uh, like over the course of years they added more verses as they had more breakups and stuff in the group. <laughs> that that to me is really cool. <laughs> like we had to update the song. You you guys get to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, we could do something on Stevie Nicks. Yeah, if anybody's got a good pun that we could do with Stevie Nicks, or we'll just throw some apostrophes in the name or something, that might be cool. Uh, so she could be in there. Uh, we'll look up uh, some of her lyrics later on, maybe, and, uh, and put that in for some of her dialogue, too, to, to really drive it home. All right, uh, so the damsel in distress runs into the party, begs for help, hands off two tickets, and then she's got to go, because she's not supposed to be... Uh, out and about um, and then they have to decide what they want to do about it if anything or they could just sell the tickets and move on you can skip this part <laughs> which it will occasionally happen just getting you ready for it okay so the intro is um, uh, as they leave the dungeon this is just me taking notes by the way this is not uh, be what it looks like when we're finished um, so the rising action uh, is uh, this is where you're you're building up towards your uh, climactic moments. Uh, the rising action will be them, the party, uh, deciding what to do. Decides what to do if they want to help, if they want to ignore it, if they want to move on, um, if they want to. Uh, now this is where they're going to surprise you, and you as the DM will have to adapt. Um, but basically, uh, party decides what's, what to do. Uh, we're going to assume for the purposes of this adventure that they do want to get into the mansion where this is being held. Uh, and there are several ways to do that. And we're going to give them a couple of, of options and then let them go at it. And I'll show you how to lay that out in an adventure setting. Like it's not completely railroaded, but we're going to give them a couple of options they decide based on the group and the players uh, what they like what they prefer this is where they get their first kind of big choice uh, so we'll lay that out <clears throat> so the party decides what's to, what to do uh, eventually they get inside or they have to they have to get inside the mansion uh, and then for this particular section, I want that to be the difficult part. Getting in will be the difficult part. Uh, so there's going to be a couple options here. Option one is going to be the stealth entry. Option two is going to be the, uh, let's call it the, um, talk your way in uh, option three is going to be to be um, the uh, backstage pass we'll call it that's the one I prefer since it's a game about uh, bards of music but so we will we will weight that one more uh, heavily but they you do need to be ready for the other options um, and of course they could ignore it but whatever it is um, we want to write a climax for, for this particular thing. Like, here's the thing that matters most. Winner, win or lose, this is this is the climactic part of this particular section. Uh, and then resolution is them, uh, the party, 
is either in or out. And then maybe they'll have a chance to do uh, something else to, to remedy the situation if they've messed up royally. Uh, it is the illusion of choice. You are correct. Um, <laughs> they will do everything in their power to avoid your favorite parts. It's true in some cases. And in other cases, they will uh, make the part that you didn't think was going to be as cool. They will make it cool just because they are enthused about it. <laughs> so whenever you're writing, always understand that the part that you would choose that seems obvious to you, that is the fun part, they there's a decent chance that they're going to avoid it. So try and make everything fun for yourself while you're writing, because later on, yeah, it's going to be frustrating. You will get frustrated. Guaranteed. Okay. All right, so that's our basic layout of uh, how story works. So now we need to go through uh, piece by piece and... Uh, fill out what the GM needs to know so they can run this particular uh, encounter. So the intro is easy. We've already uh, uh, talked about it. Okay, so um, uh, this section is just for the, for the, for the GM. So uh, it doesn't have to have any special uh, formatting for right now. I believe all of our stuff up here. Yeah, there's no special formatting on just regular GM notes. So you can leave that as is. <clears throat> all right. The adventurers will need to leave the dungeon at some point either because they need tools or spells to proceed further in or because they have run out of places to explore. If they are not leaving when you need them to, you can always describe the sound of rain and rising water in the tunnels to force them back to the surface. Okay, so that's our intro. Uh, now let's lead them into the hook. As they leave, they will encounter, and then here's where we need our damsel in distress. Uh, so let's uh, let's save first of all, so I don't lose this section. All right, let's uh, look around. Or I've got an image that I think would work. Uh, let me pull it up. And I'm just going to load it because I've already got it prepped. Uh, so for our characters, we go to our character section. And if you haven't done this before, uh, we're going to make a new character uh, as an NPC. And then we're going to link to her. So, uh, to make a new character, you can use this little plus button uh, at the top of your character section to make a new character. And here you go. Um, so, we want to do something on uh, the Stevie Nicks name. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm curious. We'll proceed further. If anybody has any uh, cool names, in the, feel free to put them in the chat. But I'm going to use. I'm just going to look something up out of curiosity because I think. Um, yeah, Nix is a uh, is a noun. It's 
couldn't see if there are any clever uh, synonyms for Nyx. Uh, Nyx is a pretty good name, though, in terms of... As far as uh, fantasy names go. So, uh, yeah, if you're ever uh, struggling for um, words and things like that, my trick is to go to source.com and uh, plug in some words and just see what comes up. You can do play, plays on words this way. Uh, another good resource is um, Rhymes With. Uh, rhyme Zone is one. There's bunches of different tools for this. So if you ever need a rhyme, uh, you can do one of these. Type in your word, and that will give you uh, exact rhymes. It will give you near rhymes. It will give you different. Uh, they'll break it up by uh, syllables and letters. Uh, so, wow, it's pretty good. Uh, just as you know, if you're looking for uh, if you're if you have some writer's block anyway, those are good tools for that. Uh, so let's do an idea. Actually, let's let's put in our image first, and then we'll base it around the image. So, clicking to upload, this brings up uh, one of your. Uh, this will bring up a window which you guys won't be able to see. Um, And I've got her listed as, I think, Moody Artistic Girl. And then that will upload. And we get a check, and she appears. I think this will work. Uh, she seems sad with all that mascara running. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, this is our Moody Artistic Girl, who's going to be our, our bride to be. Uh, something Nix. Just do apostrophes, that might work. We'll call her um, we can do an How about Evie? Evie's good. Evie. Mix. Always put apostrophes. <laughs> I think we'll leave it out for this one, but uh, <laughs> Evie Nix. Um, I don't have any tags for her yet because we're still creating her, but. A sad eyed. Let's do a young, sad eyed um, girl, desperate for freedom. Did you know there's actually an order to your? Uh, there's an official order to uh, adjectives. I forget what it is. I think I can look it up. Yeah, here it is. So, like, if you ever hear a description of something and it sounds like wrong, it's because there's actually an order. And we've kind of learned it over the course of learning the language. You, you've probably learned it inherently and, and just never knew. What's the quantity or number, quality? Our option, the size, the age, the shape, the color, and so on and so forth. But if, if it ever feels out of place, it's because it's, it's probably out of order. It's just a little English tidbit. That's why it's so fun to learn English, I'm sure, uh, if it's not your first language. So a young, sad-eyed girl, desperate for freedom. Um, we could give her a character sheet if we wanted to. We don't need to right now. It's not critical yet. Because... Really, you need this for uh, combat purposes or for if they're joining the party as a, as a participant 
in the adventure or something like that, and they might have a skill that might be useful or spells or something, but uh, not important right now. Uh, so description, we don't have any crunch to give her yet using her stats. Um, we know that she has an items, uh, she does have some items which are um, in possession of two tickets to the Paradise City Masquerade Ball. Uh, and then her biography. Uh, okay, so this is where we're um, getting into um, the role-playing aspect. So, very nice of him. Thank you. Oh, you get some lyrics. Cool. <laughs> Those are actual lyrics? Oh my god. <laughs> I had no idea. So that works. See? That's awesome. Okay. Um, all right, so there's a couple ways to uh, lay out your characters. Uh, since we're going into the heavy role-playing session, it's important for the, for the DM to have um, a pretty solid amount of material to work with because you're going to be uh, making a lot of this stuff up from scratch. You're trying to make the dialogue sound natural. Uh, so having a lot of this prepared, really knowing your character is going to help. There's a handful of ways um, to lay this out. There's lots of uh, guides online about how to do this, but I'm going to show you kind of my version of it, and we're going to see if that's uh, going to work for our purposes. Oh, there's no blackbird. All right. Makes sense. <laughs> okay. Um, so we want to... Uh, we definitely have a backstory that we need. Uh that's one of our things, but um, uh, some of the other important stuff that we're going to need uh, is going to be, um, I'm going to list it up here actually because it will be easier to find, and uh, this is items, uh, but we want to uh, give some directions about voice and about mannerisms uh, these are important because that you're you're trying to convey a character the only things you have to work with unless you happen to bring props to your games which is an option uh, is the voice and the mannerisms you also want them to be consistent uh, this person is probably if she doesn't get uh, married off anyway uh, she's probably going to appear and help the party later on so you want to make sure you have your voice notes because if you're rolling a bunch of different NPCs you're, you're going to forget occasionally what uh, voices and stuff you are so um, <clears throat> uh, we're going to make uh, Evie her voice is going to be uh, um, Whisper quiet and mousy. Uh, we want her to seem shy at first. Later on, when, if she uh, earns her freedom, she will open up and become the rock goddess that we might want her to be later on. But we're going to show that change over time with our role playing. So, whisper quiet and mousy. Um, mannerisms uh, based on the picture. Uh, she stares off into the distance a lot, uh, and she's chewing on her thumb in that particular picture. So let's use that. Uh, just use whatever inspirations you can come up with. It'll help tremendously if um, your images match the things that you come up with. So sometimes it's good to do the image first. It's easier to find the image than it is to... Um, and, and then match the mannerisms than it is to write the mannerisms and then do the image afterwards. So, mannerisms... Uh, stares longingly out windows and often nibbles on her thumb while she speaks, which makes it difficult to understand you if you've never dealt with that before. Uh, so that's pretty good. You can sell a character with just that much. Um, 
and you don't want to you don't want to overload these with lots and lots of different things. You want something easy to remember because remember, uh, you're reading these notes as the DM. You get a quick glance and then you're on. You're on stage. You're role playing. So you need sort of the, the quickest version of whatever it is. So we know she stares longingly out windows and nibbles on her thumb while she speaks. Those are her mannerisms. We know her voice. Uh, we know she has items in her possession. She has the two tickets uh, that she needs to give to the party. So let's come up with a little bit of uh, backstory. Um, she will be the daughter of a an old and noble family. Uh, the name Nix, I believe we have uh, already alluded to uh, a Nix as one of our muses. So perhaps uh, one of the old families took that used to live here back when the muses were uh, one of the main religions kept that name, uh, used it. Actually, let's put a Y in it, because that's cooler. <laughs> We're not going to have an apostrophe, at least we should have a Y or two. Alright, uh, so she's the daughter of an old and noble family that has old roots. Ancient, let's call it ancient. Ancient roots in Paradise City. She was betrothed against her will many years ago to, and then we don't have that character written yet, so let's uh, read the space. And is set to marry him at the masquerade ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty good so far. Uh, by the way, if you need to highlight anything, making it bold is very easy. And just put asterisks around it, no spaces. Whatever look, works for you. Uh, bold is asterisks, um, underline is pluses, italics is dashes, I think. So, so what's strike through? Apparently, strike through is. No, strike through is dashes. Oh, italics is underscore. That's what it is. Striker italics. So there you go. Okay. All right. Uh, ancient ruins of Paradise City. She was betrothed against her will many years ago uh, to our bad guy and is set to marry him at the Masquerade Ball. Um, despite her protestations, her powerful family is insistent. Is that not how you spell it? Insistent that she go through with the wedding to secure their estate to uh, and we want to include our also bad guy the Church of Rhea to the let's capitalize it to make it more intimidating so that'll give a link to that um, so she's being betrothed. She's going to get married in the Masquerade Ball. She is in desperate need of some sort of escape. How the players uh, choose to help her get her out of it or convince her to go through with it or whatever, let's leave that completely up to them. 
that can be their uh, one of their big choices in an adventure one is how they deal with that. So, uh, so she's tied to the Church of Rhea. Uh, or her family is about to be tied to the Church of Rhea, and we can come up with uh, why the family wants to do that uh, later on when we come up with more characters in that family. Um, I think we should have a little bit of a love triangle. I think she should be perhaps enamored with someone else. Now, um, I think this should be an optional thing, uh, because one of the things you can use as, as a DM is if one of your role players, um, uh, is very flirty, uh, with this particular character and, uh, wants to perhaps uh, try and, and form a relationship of the romantic variety with this character, um, then that should be an option for you as a DM. So uh, let's put this as the love triangle option. Uh, this, it's another uh, thing that you can use too. Like if they seem um, unwilling to help, uh, maybe you could throw this in as, as an extra thing. Like oh, and also uh, maybe you can help me get to my boyfriend. But whatever, whatever you want to use it for. So having it as an option would be useful, and then the DM can make that call on the fly. All right. So the love triangle option is going to be. Uh, uh, Let's see, let's do, Evie is enamored with, um, I think we should use something we've already created. Let me go down to our Paradise City map. And we've got some uh, markers on here. So we have Aerosmith's Fine Fletcher Shop. We have Alice the Cooper. What was the, oh, that's Marilyn's Mansion, right? And then that's uh, Iron Man Smithy. Uh, so who do you want? Aerosmith, Iron Man. Probably not Alice the Cooper. He's too cool. <laughs> Sir Lindy Buckminster. <laughs> yes! That's who actually that they uh, they had the uh, love triangle with, right? It's all the members of the band, and they stayed in the band together for a long time. That's most bands split up. Sir Lindy Buckminster is really good. Okay, we'll use him. That's good. All right, let's go back to where we were. Uh, Evie is enamored with Sir Lindy. Buckminster. Who I think he came up with a man bun before it was for anyone else. If I <laughs> I'm a fan of his hairstyle. If you can't tell. <laughs> okay, we'll create a character for him too. Uh Evie's enamored with Sir Lindy Buckminster. Um who is uh, of lesser nobility, but who has pledged his love uh, she wishes nothing more than to escape paradise with him, but he doesn't have the political clout to break up the wedding and is being watched carefully by the Nick's family. 
Okay. All right, thanks, uh, Jim Rockford, for coming up with our NPCs. If anybody else wants to uh, throw in any suggestions in the chat, feel free at any point uh, for this and or other parts of the adventure uh, or the campaign. We will try and put them in as we can, wherever we can. Uh, there's lots of musical puns and uh, sort of behind-the-music kind of stuff that we can uh, throw in for for uh, musical files, whatever you call them. Uh, people who like music. All right, so we have the love triangle option uh, for the, the DM who needs that particular thing for their um, game. If not, they can skip it, and she just wants to be free. Um, but we do need to... Let's see. Uh, so let's create the character. And uh, then we'll go in and create our uh, other two people. All right, so here's what it'll look like when you're looking at it. We've got our brief description. Uh, we've got our um, little cues for how to do her voice and her mannerisms. So, for example, if I were reading this quickly and handed it a character, whisper quiet mousy, you do something like uh, the, the girl approaches you, uh, you describe her briefly, and then you say, she says something like that. Excuse me, I, I, I'm in desperate need of help. And just move on from there. That's all that. That's all you need to do. And then you capture that character. And then whenever she speaks and continues to speak, you just do a hand motion, do the voice, get back into it. They'll know who you're talking about in general. And if they need a reminder, they can bring up their, their, her OP page. Uh, and they can look up all the stuff they know about her. Uh, another thing that was uh, some tricks that I've learned from other Obsidian Portal users is um, your, uh, your your players can go in and um, and participate in your campaign and by editing things, like putting things in adventure logs and stuff like that. And uh, you can let them add notes uh, to the page for what they found out about things. So that's a good use of OP. And then uh, also you can designate one person during the course of your game to bring up character portraits. I did that one game that was very helpful. It saves a bunch of time for the GM. <laughs> You'll get hipstery and weird. I'm cool with that though. Like we, I, the whole, I, I think the whole idea of having like a whole kingdom that is all your particular style of music somewhere would be really cool. <laughs> like it's <laughs> like, like right now, where the the kingdom that we're currently in, I'm kind of envisioning is like a 70s, 80s, 90s sort of you know popular but cool kind of place. I think there should definitely be a, a like a Nordic metal uh, kingdom and uh, like the the really like the smooth jazz free city <laughs> kind of place. So yeah, if, if you wanna if you wanna come up with like your particular style of really obscure music. <laughs> Feel free. We'll, we'll throw. We'll make a whole area just for that. Um. Okay, so we need some more characters. Let's go in and finish the love triangle. Uh, we have our optional character. Let's make him next. Uh, Sir Lindy Buckminster. See, now we've got family names, too. We have the Buckminsters and the, and the Nixes. Um, let's make him optional as a tag. So if you need to search for some, some extras, it's always good to have more extras than you need uh, in your GM notes. Uh, so we need a picture for this guy. Uh, so let's go back before we start writing anything. And uh, come up with a cool picture for um, Sir Lindy. Um, so, what do we search for? We need a guy who is um, kind of uh, prim and proper. Maybe posh. Let's see what that. Give us, let's give us more 
We need, uh, I think we can search by category too. Person. Narrow down the search. Uh, yeah, so Unsplash. Well, that's not bad. But it's a little too modern. Ooh, that guy's cool. Not for this particular. Keep him for later. Uh, Unsplash has more modern um, uh, photography. It's more for uh, artistic photographers. Uh, Pixabay has more generic stuff. Epic Beard. That's good for a girl. Yeah, any of these uh, NPCs, you can swap the genders around if you need to. Uh, depending on your play style. Like if you're if you're playing with... Uh, uh, like mo most of my gaming groups are all guys or sometimes a mix of guys and girls um, you can move things around if that works better for you in terms of the NPCs genders if you're trying to establish uh, romantic role playing opportunities it's not bad at the hipster look isn't awful. He's not bad either. Let's try... These guys will have modern glasses. That's not really something I want. Yeah, it's very similar. Okay, let's try Pixabay then. Let's see if we get lucky there. It'd be nice if he looked like uh, the actual. But doesn't have to be our our Stevie Nicks does not look like Stevie Nicks, so that guy's good. I like him. <laughs> oh, that's not bad with the pipe. We might have to just deal with the glasses. Yeah, I think we can make that work. There's just going to be glasses in our world. Maybe I'll go in and shop them out later on, but this isn't bad. Okay. You can, of course, spend more time uh, when you are uh, searching for the, the perfect uh, character portraits and things. Uh, let me get it to the right folder. Again, you guys won't be able to see my folders, but <clears throat> I'm just arranging it where it needs to be. And then I'm going to uh, open it up in paint.net, crop out the section that I want, <clears throat> and um, Turn it into a character portrait. Resize. <laughs> Resizing to 500 by 500, just because it's a nice, convenient square. Now we can get back to, where were we? Okay. And uploading the picture, and there's our picture. So we know he smokes a pipe. We know he wears spectacles. So Sir Lindy is 
a pipe smoking dandy who wears spectacles. Uh, for the quick description, I usually try and do a little, just, uh, it's more for the GM, uh, to briefly glance over. So I try and do just a quick visual description. Uh, if you, uh, are just reading the text part. So, um, we know he had items in his possession. He will have, don't forget we're making these bold. So he has a pipe smoke weed and spectacles uh, yeah my thought is on the spectacles technically uh, I was envisioning this as kind of a renaissance era so I, I believe they did have uh, wearable spectacles towards the end of that. The, it's the French word, the piece, piece nez, or whatever, the little ones that clip to your nose. Um, but also, it's it's a game about rock music, so we have to have sunglasses in there somehow. Um, so we're going to do that. <clears throat> oh, did you find a cool uh, picture? I'll have to look at it later. I can't pull it up right now. but uh, I'll... I'll Get that after the stream yeah there's there's tons of good images out there if you uh start digging around um in terms of theme also um there was while well, i'm thinking about it uh there's a cool let's see if i can get to it real fast and let you know what the web address is um My friend found this uh, converter. Uh, it's convertimage.net to do online photo effects, and you can turn um, like regular uh, photos into sketches and stuff like that with different kinds of effects. So uh, it's all one word convertimage.net, and then you can look around. You can do compression, you can do. Um, edits and resizes and stuff like that and they don't they don't save your image it's just for your use so you do these cool but I, we did some sketches recently uh turned some photos into sketches and they turned out really well so if you need a, a particular look for something and you you are not a photoshop pro or paint shop pro or any of those uh then you can definitely use an online converter but that's a really cool one that you just you showed that to me the other day so that's neat um Convert image. All right. Uh, let's. Where were we? Back to. All right. Uh, Sir Lindy. Uh, so once again, we want to do the same kind of uh, format, where we give him a voice, and we give him mannerisms. Uh, so if you were going to use this. Uh, happen to have a pipe at home uh, you could certainly pull one out you could make one out of just hold a pencil or something in your mouth instead uh, if you don't um, so his mannerisms since we know he has a pipe and spectacles uh, will be um, avoids eye contact by adjusting his smoking pipe and cleaning his spectacles on a handkerchief. So we need to do the handkerchief also. Silken handkerchief and spectacles and spell it. Uh, okay, so he avoids eye contact by adjusting his smoking pipe and cleaning his spectacles on his handkerchief. Um, so we want to make him a, uh, a non-threat, the reason that he can't stand up to uh, the bad guys who want to marry his girlfriend is because uh, 
he, he can't do conflict. He, he is unable to do it. So he won't be any help unless they uh, convince him to, unless the party convinces him to, to join the battle with some sort of rousing speech or something, which we might be able to do. Uh, it could be a really good role-playing session uh, in terms of uh, talking to these two young crazy kids and getting them uh, getting them to, to change slightly for their own benefit. Uh, that would be another option for this section of the role-playing game. All right, uh, his voice. Uh, we'll give him a prim and proper voice of a well bred nobleman um, so for me uh, that would be something quite something like this He's, he rambles on a, a decent amount but he doesn't quite ever never quite get to the point in, his, in the conversation and he's a, no offense of course uh, that's that's my version of that but uh, so wh whatever cues that you need, uh, this is what you type in here to, to tell you how to do a voice. Um, another thing you can do is do, uh, if, if you do anything remotely akin to celebrity impressions, this, this is another way to put that. Um, so, for example, you could do uh, Hugh Grant. Uh, even if you can't do a Hugh Grant, your version of Hugh Grant will sound distinct enough that you will always be able to come back and do the same version of that. So even if it doesn't actually sound like Hugh Grant, uh, whatever in your brain, in your head, sounds like Hugh Grant that you're going for will come across. You will do it the same way every time. So that's a good trick also is to uh, base it on a, a celebrity or a, a personality that you can fake a voice for. And as long as you do it the same way every time. Okay, so that's good enough for his crunch. Next, we need his biography. Again, this is an optional character, so we don't have to go into a ton of detail because he might not even get used. Um, so we'll do... So Lindy is a knight by blood only, as he has not the slightest bit of courage in his body. <clears throat> he is a shy and mm, let's say uh, unambitious Gentlemen, with few prospects, <clears throat> save to inherit his family's meager, dwindling holdings. The only real passion in his life has been, and we'll put our character link in here, uh, so you can just, we don't have that many characters yet, but later on you can um, search by name and tag, filter by name and tag. Uh, so uh, Evie here, I'm going to insert her link. Again, uh, the character slug is slightly different than a wiki page slug. If you look, it, there's a little colon in there. <clears throat> I think that's the same for items, too. If you want to put an item in, you'll do a little colon, and then the item slug, and then the name that you want to appear. The only real passion in his life has been Evie Nix, to whom he has proposed marriage and elopement. Is that how you spell elopement? No. It's probably an E in it. Yep. Love spell checkers. Uh, he's proposed marriage and elopement. Um, she's 
she is keen on him as well, but her family and her family disapproves greatly. Okay. Uh, okay, that's pretty good. I think that's good enough for a side character. Let's create him. So we've got two sides of our love triangle figured out. I'm going to check out uh, this link that dance. Yes, I've seen that one. Yeah, that guy's awesome. <laughs> it's uh, If you're not looking at it, it's a sort of a gray-haired rock star with his, with his hair going crazy. And he's got awesome 80 sunglasses, and uh, it's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on to the other section of our love triangle, which is the bad guy. Uh, so let me show you where we are on our town map to catch you up a little bit if you have forgotten. All right, we have our main bad guys are in the Temple Keep. It's the Church of Berea. They're in the fortified section of town, uh, and we're gonna, they are a religious uh, order, and also they have infiltrated the, uh, the nobility of the land, so they have a lot of political uh, power and clout and whatnot, and that's what they're using here. So um, uh, one of the young sons of uh, this particular, one of the families that is allied with the Temple Keep is in the Church of Rhea, is going to be uh, the other side of our love triangle. He's going to be our bad guy. Um, so for him, I think we need a uh, an image that will be, let's search, um, we'll try to unsplash again, see what we get. Let's search for a sinister uh, person. I think we need to do sinister. Let's see if we get lucky here. Somebody. And not a lot of options on this one. That's not a bad face, but we need yeah, this guy looks like a jerk. <laughs> Sorry to whoever you actually are in real life, but keep that as an option. And yeah, let's try oh, this guy looks like a jerk too. Alright, let's try Pixabay and see if we get anything. Sinister Man. Not a lot. Let's try this sinister. Within the category of people. Not a ton. You can use Batman, but I mean not. That's creepy. Let's try E Bill. A little too evil. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Let's look at this guy. This is going to be at a masquerade ball when they first encounter him, so this could be a good image, actually. 
think we'll do this one. Yeah, let's see if it makes me play the picture game again. I'm not a robot, as far as I know. Alright, let me save this real quick and manipulate the image and then we'll put it on And if anybody has any good uh, rocker names or anything that would be a good uh, play on words for another uh, evil nobleman, you can definitely use those now. Uh, I'm just opening this up in Paint and cropping it right now. Paint.net. Just be a moment. And then resizing. Save. Okay, now let's make our guy. All right, making a new character. Uh, let me put his picture in here so we can see if I have cropped correctly. All right, and it's uploaded. Bearing for head to the bone. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, we got to give him a stutter. Yes, <laughs> that's good. Uh... All right. Uh, we will uh, fantasy game the uh, the name by adding random letters and apostrophes. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> it's <laughs> Brad to the bone. <laughs> Could probably spell that a little bit differently. <laughs> uh, that's good, though. I, I think that's good. We've got a title of nobility in there. We've created another evil family, the to the bones. <laughs> It's just, uh, he's going to be a foe. That's one of our tags that we're using so far. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, a grinning sadist. chip on his shoulder. Alright, this guy we may do a character sheet for, but let's do his description first. Um, actually, I don't, if you do the character sheet, I think it does that, so let's come back to that in a second. Um, let's do his biography, maybe. Let's do that. Let's check the character sheet out. 
I forget which one of these is which. Let's check out this one. It's pretty good. These are, uh, if you haven't seen these before, these are DSTs. Uh, that's dynamic sheet templates, and they are user-made creations, and basically you, you fill them out, and then if they uh, have uh, plugged in the different mathematical stuff correctly, then when you put in your scores, they will automatically um, calculate certain things for you. Uh, there's a couple different options. This one looks pretty good. I think we've looked at this one before. And then this one's real, real basic. If you need something simple. I'm going to use this second one just so I can show it to you. Um, and then... Well, this, is, this one's by Solar Bear. Let's put that in there for now and then save it and then we'll see what it looks like. Create. Yep, and then it's filled in his, his name in the character name section. And then other stuff that we put in, it would get filled in here. And then here, here would be his bio that we could edit. So, uh, yeah, if we use this one, then we'll... Um, We'll do a slightly different layout because this guy might actually need a character sheet. So let's go in and edit and we'll see how it works. Uh, okay, so we don't know anything about his stuff yet, but we'll go over that in a second. Uh, it's your traits and proficiencies, your feats, your class abilities, you can add those. Here's your equipment. Um, so we know that he has a, uh, what's magic items? I'm going to give him, uh, we're going to give him some kind of magic stuff later on, but for right now I think we're good. His carrying capacity, yeah, here's inventory. Uh, we know from his picture that he has a masquerade mask. If you click OK. Uh, we don't need to really give it a weight right now. It's not really important, but good. Here's spells. We may make him a spellcaster. He might be a cleric, actually. Later on, that would be kind of cool. Or a paladin. Something kind of intimidating from the, uh, the Church of Rhea. And then you have personality traits. This is probably where we'll put our um, stuff about uh, voice and all that kind of thing. So for voice... Uh, we will give him a stutter. Stutters occasionally. That way you don't have to do it the whole time. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. That looks alright. Uh, and then mannerisms. Uh, we will do... I think we may have lost the stream here. Hang on a second. Still good? There we go. Sorry, having perhaps some technical issues. Let's see how we go here.
If we're still broadcasting, uh, sorry about the delay. Just having a couple of technical issues. We'll get back to it in just one second. Uh, I may keep going, and then uh, if we're having problems, please let me know in the chat because I can still read the chat for now. Uh, let's move on uh, to mannerisms. Uh, let's see. He's smarmy. <clears throat> Grinning. And... Smarmy, grimming, and... Um, uh, strokes his chin with his gloved fingers. Alright. Flaws, bonds, ideals, personality traits. Oh, I forgot to hit. Okay, that's what I think. Mannerisms. Uh, what did I say? Smarmy. Grinning. And strokes his chip. Yes. And hit OK. There it is. Now it's updated. OK. Alright, thanks. I, I, whatever the technical issue is, was on my side. My, uh, my video replay just went blank for a second. So, probably nothing. All right, um, so we've got a voice, we've got some mannerisms. Uh, we don't need to go into the background just yet because I want to work on that later, but he is trying to marry uh, our, our um, protagonist uh, damsel in distress. So let's go ahead and generate this and make sure that we're good on that. Uh, he's not a secret, he's good. Bread to the bone. <laughs> Just. <laughs> uh, hopefully, the people uh, who are making characters for these games will also come up with hilarious names because I think that would be funny. All right, so we've got his. Uh, here's his inventory. If you need to see his inventory, we've got his voice and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, um, let's briefly talk about how you. Uh, make a character in 5th edition D&D. &D. You, you will need a player's handbook uh, for that particular part. And you'll go in and basically follow step by step. It's pretty quick in this one, uh, in this version. But you will pick a uh, your some of your information. Uh, your class will be something like cleric or paladin or fighter or something along those lines. Uh, his alignment, he'll be some sort of evil. We don't know yet. We'll come up with that. He'll probably be human, just to make it easy. Um, but we could definitely make him something else. Uh, his deity will be uh, the Church of Rhea. Uh, we'll, we will have to detail uh, what that is. His age will be somewhere around marriage-type marriage age, so uh, maybe early 20s, late teens, something like that. Um you can fill some of this stuff in based on the picture if you want to. Uh, ability scores, uh, we will make him, uh, at some point, we will uh, focus on making him um, capable enough in combat that if the players did decide to physically fight him, that he would survive okay uh, for a little while and make it an interesting fight. But we will work on uh, making, uh, he, will, he will probably be a mini-boss at some point, so we will have to work on making him. Uh, specifically, but um, I don't think we're going to have time this stream. We're going to have to do that on uh, a later stream. Uh, I do want to get into um, let's see. Uh, yeah, he'll, we'll, we'll do probably give him a magic item, a low level magic item uh, to get going on that and uh, we'll, we'll do the full work up on him. Since he's going to be a mini boss, though, so, uh, at the very least, I will... Uh, Definitely, uh, yeah, we are, some people are having some technical issues, I'm being told, so 
Uh, if you're having problems, please reload. Um, and I will still be here when you get back, don't worry. Uh, Twitch may be having issues, who knows. Okay. So we'll spend some time working on him later, but we've got his name down now, uh, which means we've got a link and we can link uh, with some of our other folks. So uh, Evie, let's go in and edit her. Uh, now that we know, uh, here's where we're putting our link. Uh, so we just click the character link. We insert Baron, Brad to the bone, and so on and so forth. And then we can also link uh, Sir Lindy Buckminster. Now we have his link. Insert. Okay, and now everybody's linked so that uh, while you're running the game you will be able to in theory at least find quickly the information that you need by opening new tabs um, in my particular browser that's uh, I center click my mouse wheel to open a new tab and single click you can set that up for yourself so it's quick and fast when you're running if you're running on a tablet um, sometimes you will hold down the link with your finger and then it'll open up options and you can open a new tab and have it all open, ready to roll. You can have them open ahead of time. Okay, so now we've got our links in here. We can go visit uh, all the people in the love triangle. We can go see the enemy and so on and so forth. So there you go. Um, all right, so in our adventure log, we will go back and put her in. We go all the way to the bottom. The White Wedding. All right, as they leave, they will encounter. And now we can put in our character link. Evie. They will encounter Evie Mix. Um, let's just write the short version for now, and then we'll, we'll flesh it out a little bit later. Mm. She will... Explain her forced marriage. Beg for help. And <clears throat> give the party two tickets to the Paradise City Masquerade Ball. Okay, so that's our hook. Look is set up. All right, the rising action. This is where the party decides what they want to do. Uh, eventually, they will have to get inside the mansion. We do need to decide which mansion. We have two mansions, uh, either the mayor's mansion or uh, Marilyn's mansion. Um, looks like we're having more buffering issues. If you are still with us, uh, sorry about the buffering. I don't know what that's all about. My internet connection is good, so maybe it's on Twitch's end. Um, there's not much left anyway, so, uh, let's see what to do. So we will work on what they find when they get to the mansion next time, because that will be our climactic battle. Uh, so this next section will be the party will need to decide what they want to do about the arranged marriage, if anything. Uh, this is where we'll do our options. Uh, let's leave that there for now. Um, if you want to, uh, we can try one of our um, cool accordion things. Let's see how that works. I haven't done these before, uh, but you have an accordion 
Uh, I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. But uh, so we have. Let me look at my so we have option one, option two, option three. Okay, so the option one, um, I'm going to call the, um, let's do option one as the backstage pass. Uh, the masquerade ball is hosting tryouts for a group to entertain the party goers and the adventurers might be able to get a job working for the hosts. Uh, option two will be the um, the stealth. Let's do stealth as option two. Um, stealth entry. Um, the party may use the recently discovered dungeon passages or let's see disguises forged tickets or some other um, um, dishonest means to get inside the mansion and then option three I forgot what our option three was so let's insert this and see what we got let's save seeing more buffering so sorry about that um the accordion insertable is an ascendant only feature i would like to uh show it off so you can see what it's all about see if it's something that you need for your own games so it's all the way down to the bottom so here's what it looks like uh in standard format so you have these three uh things and then we click on it and it pulls a little drop down menu or whichever one that you happen to be clicked on at the time. So there we go. Uh, I think our other one was a, a talk your way in or something like that. So that's what that looks like. Uh, I'll add talk your way in later, but um, I'm getting a little low on time, but you get the basic idea for that one. So that's how you set up that. Uh, so part three, we got him at the white wedding. At some point, they encounter Evie Nix. She tells her sob story. She gives them two tickets. They decide what to do. Uh, once they decide what to do, we will set up uh, next time some sort of a skill challenge. Uh, I think I will cut it a little short this time since we're having um, internet buffing issues with people. Uh, but that'll be a good thing to work on next time. And um, uh, another thing that we will work on next time, I think, is uh, our, some of our custom rules, which I'll talk about very briefly, um, so that you can think about it for next time and join us and help us write them. So basically, uh, in terms of custom rules, we have, if they decide to do the backstage pass, pass option, uh, they will need to perform, do their first performance as an entertainment group, in my head, I envision this as a band. It could be whatever. It could be acrobats. It could be um, stand-up comedy. Whatever they decide to do, whatever is appropriate for their group that they've settled on. Uh, so they will show up at the uh, at the mansion. Say we're interested in um, uh, the job posting. 
to be your uh, entertainment for the night, and then they will have to uh, demonstrate their skills, uh, and then we will do a, what's called a skill challenge. It's basically um, and sort of like a like a combat encounter, but instead of fighting monsters, you are instead overcoming uh, various um, skill checks in order to rack up enough successes to succeed. Uh, and then you have to adapt to any uh, obstacles that show up along the way. So that's what that's about. And um, we will be writing some custom rules for how to do that because this will not be the first time that they have to do something along those lines. Eventually, our, uh, later on, they will be doing uh, battles of the bands quite regularly. Is one of the things that they will encounter when they do uh, they do the backstage pass option is uh, our rival band, the Carts, who are right here. Uh, this was our tribute to uh, uh, the lead singer of the Carts who passed away recently. Uh, so we put them into our game. So the there's another band competing for the same job. They want to beat them. So we're going to write some rules for dueling bands because we need to introduce them to the rules for that early. So there'll be custom rules next time. Uh, we'll be finishing up our, uh, our section three, our white wedding, and moving on to our climax, which will be a, uh, a battle in the ballroom, the ballroom blitz section, which will finish up our uh, adventure number one in four parts. So that's the goal for next time. Uh, custom rules and uh, finishing that stuff up. And Hopefully you guys had fun. Thanks for participating in the chat, those of you who could. Sorry about the tech issues uh, for those of you who had those. Uh, we will... Let's see what else is going on uh, this week. You can catch uh, reruns of this on the Twitch VOD. Uh, we also post them about a week later on uh, our YouTube channel, um, and which also has some short tutorial videos and things like that to show you how to do little stuff if you need some more help getting started with OP. Um, you can leave comments there also. I will, I will read them there and uh, put any suggestions you have into our game world. You can also contact me directly on uh Obsidian Portal uh, itself. If you have an account, you can go to your profile section, go down uh, here, and it'll be uh, find my profile, put my name in, JYNX001, and there will be a little uh, a mail icon that you can send mail to my inbox, and I will read it if you need to contact me in that way. Um, otherwise, be sure and check out all the other nice campaigns we have if you need some inspiration you can go to the campaigns tab go down to all campaigns search through those check out our campaigns of the month for the really cool looking ones and lots of other folks have stuff too uh what else do we have on uh other streams on tuesday is Kalak coding the custom css work he can make it look even nicer than what i have here uh, so be sure and watch that show He's getting into some really neat customizing stuff, and we're going to try and uh, use some of those lessons on here. Uh, otherwise, that's about it for this week. Um, thanks for uh, playing along and uh, participating and hanging out. And we will see you next time on Live Free or Die Bard for episode 10, which I can't believe it's been that many already. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye-bye.